Hi everyone, I am Mayank and welcome to this amazing video on AI ML projects by SimpleLearn. In this video, we will clear your doubts regarding the projects you can add to your resume to clear the interview or advance your career in AI and machine learning. But, but before we begin, if you enjoy watching these type of videos and find them interesting, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we bring you the best videos daily. Also hit the bell icon to never miss any update from SimpleLearn. So let's get started. So these projects are not learning experience. They are your passport to an impressive resume and coveted opportunity. Hands-on mastery on these projects showcases your practical skills, setting you apart in the competitive job market. Our inaugural project sets the stage for the remarkable path ahead, the face recognition system. After that, we will see how we predict personality by implementing personality prediction system. We will cover the speech recognition system. And after that, we will cover projects like fake news detection and hate speech detection system. We will see how we can classify image using CNN. After that, we will see the movie recommendation system. Enter a world of algorithms that understand your preferences and curate movie suggestion tailor made for you. In the end, we will see a text to speech conversation system. So buckle up for an accelerating ride through the realms of artificial intelligence, data science and innovation. The job opportunities in machine learning are as varies ranging and abundant as the technology application, the average annual salary income for machine learning engineers in US is $140,000 in the US and in India, its annual salary is 20 lakh per annum. On that note, if you are an aspiring AI ML engineer, there is no better time to train yourself in the exciting field of machine learning. If you are looking for a course that covers everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques like machine learning algorithm, development and unsupervised learning. Look no further than our Caltech in partnership with IBM. This AI ML bootcamp in collaboration with Caltech will help you advance your career as an AI ML specialist. The AI ML bootcamp includes live classes delivered by industry experts, hands-on lab, industry relevant projects and master classes by Caltech professor. Key features of this amazing machine learning course include and up to 22 CUs from Caltech CITME, online convocation by Caltech CTME program director, Simply Learn's career services helps you get noticed by top hiring companies, earn a bootcamp certificate from Caltech CTME, 25 plus hands-on projects across industry verticals to integrated lab. So why wait? Join now. Seats are filling fast and find the course link from the description box below. So without any further ado, over to our training expert. So in today's session, we will see what OpenCV is moving forward. We will see what is face detection and at the end we will go through the hands of live demo of how we can create face detection using OpenCV Python. We will perform different functions and use different Python libraries to create face detection. Before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss what OpenCV is and proceed further for the same. What is OpenCV? A collection of Python bindings called OpenCV. Python was created to address issue with the computer vision. Python is general purpose programming language created by Guido von Rassum that quickly gained popularity largely due to its ease of use and readable code. The programmer can express concept in less code without sacrificing readability. NumPy, a highly efficient library for numerical operation with a MATLAB-like syntax, is used by OpenCV Python. NumPy arrays are translated into and out of all OpenCV array forms. Additionally, this makes it simpler to interact with other NumPy using libraries like SciPy and Matplotlib. After understanding what is OpenCV, let's move forward and see what phase detection is. So what is phase detection? Phase detection, also known as facial detection, is a computer technology that uses artificial intelligence to find and recognize human faces in digital photographs. Phase detection technology can be enable real-time surveillance and tracking of people in various industries such as security, biometrics, law enforcement, entertainment, and personal safety. From basic computer vision method to developments in machine learning to increasingly complex artificial neural network and related technologies, phase detection has advanced leading or to ongoing performance increases. It now serves as a foundation from some crucial applications such as face tracking, face analysis, face recognition, the application ability to perform sequential tasks substantially impacts the face direction. 
So dear learner, if you want to upskill your AI and machine learning skills, so give a chance to Simply Learn Professional Certificate Program in AI and Machine Learning, which comes with completion certificate and in-depth knowledge of AI and machine learning. Check this course detail from the description box below. So here is one question for you guys. I will give you exactly one minute for this. You can comment or give your answer in the chat section so I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. So the question is, which of the following function is a built-in function in Python? Factorial, print, seed, sqrt. So I am starting the timer of one minute. Just type your answer in the comment section or in the chat section. Please do let me know your answers. So I'm starting the timer of one minute. Which of the following function is a built-in function in Python? Factorial, print, seed, sqrt. Let us know your answer in the comment section below. I kindly ask that everyone take part in this session. Which of the following function is a built-in function in Python? 30 seconds more. Factorial, print, seed, sqrt. Please let me know your answer in the comment section below. 20 seconds remaining. Which of the following function is a built-in function in Python? 10 seconds more. Please let us know your answer in the comment section below. So after the allotted time has passed, those who provided the correct response will receive a response. And those who provided the incorrect response will receive one. So now let's move to our programming part to create face detection using OpenCV Python. So first we will open command prompt to write a command to open Jupyter Notebook. So here we will write Jupyter Notebook. Press enter. So this is the landing page of Jupyter Notebook and here you have to select new Python file. So this is how the Jupyter Notebook UI looks like. So at first we will import some major libraries of Python, which will help us in creating a face detection system. So first let me rename this face detection. First we will import import CV2. Press enter, then import another library, import numpy as np. And the third one is major one, import face recognition as fr. Then press enter. So CV means capturing video. The CV2 function is a open CV can read video, video capture by using pass zero function parameter. We can access our webcam. We may pass as RTSP URL in the function parameter to capture the CCTV footage, which is quite helpful for video analysis. And another one is NumPy. NumPy is a Python library used for working with arrays. It also has function for working in the domain of linear algebra and matrices. It is an open source project. You can use it freely. NumPy stands for numerical Python. And the third one is face recognition. Face recognition and manipulation using Python or the command line. The easiest facial recognition library in the world. Built using cutting edge face recognition technology from DLIB developed using deep learning. So moving forwards, let's import our video capture device. So for that, we have to write here video underscore capture. This is our variable name equals to cv2 dot video capture and we have to pass here zero. Then press enter. Okay, here we 
should be capital so the video capture function from opencv is used to interact with the cameras what we can do is video can be read shown and saved display the image that the camera captured so moving forward let me import my image for the further detection process okay so image equals to fr dot load underscore image underscore file then image name or image path boy dot jpg press enter using load image file we can import image file to our detection system so moving forward let's set encoding for the image okay so i will write here image underscore face underscore encoding equals to fr dot face encodings then image then zero press enter yeah so face encoding basically uses 128 computer generated measures to represent the face similar encoding would be present in two images of the same person while being completely different in two images of two distinct people so moving forward let's do let me write first i will write here known encodings equals to image face coding okay then press enter then known face names equals to then here i have to put my name so i will write bank okay then press enter so what i did is i assigned known face encodings to my image face encoding so what will happen if image matches to my face then it will print my name and for the rest we will add name unknown okay so let me add the function now for face detection system so let me write the full code for it first then i will explain you line wise okay so just stay tuned with me i will write here so i will write while okay true okay so ret comma frame i will explain you line by line don't worry equals to then video capture dot read then rgb underscore frame equals to frame then colon comma then again colon comma then two colon then minus one okay yeah so here i will write fc underscore locations equals to fr dot face underscore locations rgb underscore frame right here fc fc is for basically face encodings equals to fr dot face underscore encodings and rgb underscore frame comma fc underscore locations okay so for top comma right comma bottom comma left okay then after right here face the score encoding comma face underscore encoding this is that was encodings this is encoding ok 
okay so before that i will write here okay so so i have to write here encoding in zip okay then here i have to write fc underscore locations locations okay then comma then face encodings colon then press enter so here i have to write matches yes yeah matches equals to fr dot compare and faces then known underscore face underscore encodings comma face underscore encoding okay so it so what if the image will not match so i have to give the name equals to unknown Then we will write face distances equals to fr dot face underscore distances underscore face underscore encodings comma face score encoding then i will write match underscore index equals to np dot a r g min okay then i will write here fc underscore distances okay then moving forward I have like if matches then match underscore index okay then colon then name equals to known underscore face underscore names then match underscore index And I have to write here CV2 dot rectangle and frame comma comma top comma right I have to give another bracket here comma bottom then comma zero comma zero comma two fifty five again comma then two for the border so then C V two dot rectangle comma then again left comma bottom then minus 35 okay so then i will write right comma bottom comma then again 0 comma 0 comma 255 then cv2 dot F I L L E D field. Okay. F should be capital. Yeah. So then we will set font equals to CV2 dot 
font okay font underscore Hershey underscore simplex okay so then I have to write here cv2 dot put text name comma name comma left plus six comma bottom minus six Okay, then comma font comma one point zero then again one comma then we have to set location like two fifty five comma two fifty five comma two fifty five then comma one okay And here I have to write cv2 dot image show I am show then like simply learn is detection okay. comma frame and if cv2 dot weight key is one and like zero x ff should be capital ff equals to equals to ord then quit and here i will write break I will write video underscore capture dot release tv2 dot destroy all windows okay yeah so let me explain you so in general RET, RET is a boolean value that indicates whether or not there was a even a return. Each frame that is returned is at the same frame. If there is no frame, you will receive none rather than an error. In OpenCV, reading and writing videos and reading and writing images are quite similar. A video is nothing more than a collection of pictures, often known as frames. So to draw a rectangle around the face that was discovered, we utilize the OpenCV rectangle. The rectangle function, we can draw the rectangle by using the points or corners position that the face location. And face encoding this, a face encoding this one. So a face encoding basically uses 128 computer generated measures to represent the face similar encoding would be present in two images of the same person while being completely different in two images of two distinct people. So this there is I use compare face. So compare face is used to compare my face to uploaded image one. Okay. If it matches, it will print my name. Otherwise, we have given unknown here. So the NumPy ARG arm. This one. Where it went this. NumPy ARG min. So the NumPy ARG min method delivers the indexes of the array's minimum element along each axis. Return an array of array indices with the same shape of the array. So this font, where is, yeah, font Hershey simplex is normal size of sans serif font. Okay. So put text, put text is used to put the text on the frame like my name or unknown so in order to display an image in a window we use the i am show this one this i am show function 
okay so the window adjusts itself to the size of image parameters window name a string that identifies the window in which the displayed image will appear okay so until a key is pressed wait key zero this one okay so until a key is pressed wait key zero will will keep the window open it is suitable for image display and wait key one i write here wait key one so wait key one will show a frame for one ms before closing the display on its own so after the script has ended users can close or remove all the windows use the python like using destroy all function function okay you would use the function if you wanted to close a window while it was open in numerous windows at once so let's see our face detection system is working or not so let me close this person on your screen first okay so let me close this first let me run this now so here you can see this pop up and i will open so here you can see my name is currently printing okay so like i have uploaded my image it's detecting correctly okay so like what if i show uh one more image so here you can see this is my icard so it is detecting properly yeah so what if i will show like another guy image so from my mobile so here you can see it is spring unknown in messi's photo yeah So what if if I will write here like uh, one of the other image this random dot jpg, then it should print unknown for me also. Okay, then I will run it again. Okay, it's working. It's working. Pop up has come. So here you can see it is now printing unknown because like I have uploaded that another random image here. so it is importing okay so it is printing unknown here so here you can see like it's printing unknown for me also so in today's session we will go through myers briggs personality prediction after that a hands off live demo of how to predict the person personality using python and machine learning we will perform different function and different python libraries so before we move on to the programming part Let's first discuss what is Myers Briggs personality prediction and proceed further for the same. So, what is Myers Briggs personality prediction? To better understand personality characteristics in the broader population, the MBTI examination was created. Although there is no such thing as better or worse personality preference, the MBTI examination can aid individuals in understanding their strength, weakness, and potential difference from the others. so there are some types of mbti indicator there is no best or better personality type than another it is not a device made to search for abnormalities and dysfunction it is sole purpose is to assist you in discovering more about yourself so there are four separate skills make up the actual questionnaire first is extrovert and introversion second is sensing and intuition third is thinking and feeling fourth is judging and perceiving so based in these four there are some types so there are 16 types istj istp isfj isfp isfj like these enfp enfj entp and entj so what is meaning of istj i means introversion s means sensing t means thinking and j means judging like this so dear learners if you want to upskill your ai and machine learning skills so give yourself a chance to simply learn a professional certificate program in ai and machine learning which comes with completion certificate and in depth knowledge of ai and machine learning check this course detail from the description box below so now let's move to our programming part so first we will open command prompt 
first we will open command prompt so here i will write jupyter enter so this is landing page of jupyter notebook so here i will go new python file so this is how the python kernels look like so here i will change name be myers briggs personality prediction okay yeah so at first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us analyzing the data so here i will write plotlib port re or numpy as nt import pandas as pd port matplotlib pyplot as plt port eborn sns then port plotly dot offline as okay then here import plotly dot graph underscore vgs object as go and import shortly dot tools as ELS from BS4 import beautiful okay. then here I will write from skill learn dot model underscore selection port cross underscore validated okay then again let me copy from here till import Then here I will import straight stratified. So okay, so here I will import sklearn dot linear model. Port logistic regression. So from this, we'll write here SK learn. Okay. Learn dot model underscore selection port learn dot port 
Ja. Die. So here I will write moon from learn dot decomposition code truncated. So here I will write from sklearn dot here and it's good section text import Then from sklearn dot pipeline code pipeline from sklearn dot namespace multinomial. Nomial and B then py dot in it underscore underscore connected is equals to Is a Python library used for working with arrays. It also has a function for working with domain of linear algebra and matrices. It is open source project and you can use it freely. NumPy stands for numerical Python. So Panda is a software library written for the Pandas programming language for data manipulation and analysis. In particular, it offers data structure and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series. An open source Python library based on matplotlib is called Seaborn. It is utilized for data exploration and data visualization with data frames and the pandas library seaborn function with ease matplotlib for python and its numerical extension numpy matplotlib is a cross platform data visualization and graphical charting project as a result it presents a strong open source substitute for matlab the apis for matplotlib allows programmers to incorporate graphs into gui applications Beautiful Soup Python software called Beautiful Soup is called Parse HTML and XML text. For process pages, it generates a parse tree that can be used to extract HTML data for web scripting. Pipeline The pipeline goal is to put together several phases that can be cross validated while using different parameters. So moving forward, let's import some different data that you can download these data set from the description box below. So here I will write train equals to pd dot read underscore psv. And then here pti dot two one dot Second one is equals to pd dot read underscore users yes okay then there is one more equals to pd dot read 
Ya sí. Está. Forum. Messages. So here I will write MBTI equals to I a key value. I'm writing a key value. So what is one? Then same. So what is it? Get that. Institutions. Ma, one T, e, then T means thinking. F means feeling. J means judging. loading so it's still loading for data set three different data set mbti1 csv users and forum messages you can download these data set from the description box below okay. or you can find this link for the drive link so these are like large data sets so it, it will take time some time Importing this data set is done. So let's use shape function to see how many rows columns are present in train data set. So here I will write train dot shape. Okay, as you can see, 865, 8675 rows and two columns. Okay, so let's move forward. So we to take a class. I repeat. So we take a look to classes. So it looked like very unbalanced data set. So here I will write cnt dot SRS equals to train type 
लियो काउंट तो है मेरा प्लॉट डॉट फिगर साइज तो एस एन एस डॉट बार प्लॉट एन टी आर एस डॉट वैल्यूज जीरो पॉइंट एट तो प्लॉट डॉट वाई लेवल टाइप्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स दैन फोन साइज थर्टी एल टी डॉट शो तो हेर यू कै एज यू कैन सी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी आई एन एफ जे आई एन एफ जे आई एन टी पी आई एन टी जे सो ऑन ओके सो दीज आर नंबर ऑफ अक्रेंस एंड द टाइप्स so moving forward let's group user id and messages so i will write here that a visual yeah so here i will write ps message message dot fill and a Yes. Dot. Underscore join. Equals to ps. Dot group by. Post. Right. message dot get here i will write the call Join. Along. Right. loading moving forward let's check accuracy with different classifiers and models 
so first we will check with extra tree classifier okay so for that we we'll write here like e etc extra tree classifier equals to extra tree classifier plan underscore estimators equals to twenty comma max was to four stops was to minus so here I will write TF IDF was to let me copy it from here and gram underscore range was to comma one that upwards SVD because it did components dull equals to pipeline. F I by D F I will write here Here I will write K folds. Here I am doing because of spelling mistakes and the kind of bits is to five comma shuffle two. And here I will write NP dot okay sorry yeah. NP dot random dot seed boring so let's see Log. log log 
in then it type the right is coding coding Oops, equals to minus one. It is still loading. So now we will print so here I will write print TV then zero point four F and I will write plus plus minus colon zero point four F dot dot B dot mean result Position results duration copy it all and reach it accordingly. So now F one score. For F1 score, we will write here F1. Same. Okay. Then here you have to write NP dot mean and result. Accuracy. Here you will write test F1 underscore micro. Okay. Then same. Test F one again for the negative loss. Right loss. Good. 
here I will write uh, negative underscore log underscore loss underscore log underscore run it so wait let me make it so here you can see the accuracy and it's it is not that good with extra t classifier as the data set is very unbalanced f1 score is a better metric than accuracy so we will check with some alternative models so let's try if we can find a more accuracy with model another model although we haven't got a lot of data so here i will write df clean text okay so here i will write text plus two beautiful Three dot sub then eight R Toma. Okay, then text equals to R E dot sub then one. TTP slash URL Text. So here I will add train. okay done so let's check accuracy with first nav base okay oh i'm done with the code because the code are mostly same so i just copied it from my document okay so let me enter so here you can see uh, the accuracy is far better than this extra tree classifier okay so we will check from one more we will let's check for logistic regression so let me write the code first then i will get back to you I'm done with the code. Let's see the accuracy of logistic regression. So, 
so let me press enter loading you can see yeah so accuracy is far good than the both so is this model overfitting could we have a better model with more data let's see the learning curve okay so here i will write train underscore sizes comma train underscore scores comma so running underscore curve done post type a false jobs first two putting equals to here I write f1 underscore train sizes equals to np dot space one comma one point dump state two one and press enter okay it is k poles this is dispatcher So for the learning curve it is a long code so let me write it for you okay and it's still loading I don't know why so I'm done with the code so let me run it now let's see the curve so for that let's like import no we don't here I will write plot learning learning curve pain posts comma train type train and sizes In underscore the scores comma test underscore the scores comma one point zero ah bigger size should be in sorry if it's not 15 15 comma 6 okay. elt dot show
here as you can see training score cross validation score learning graph so it's look like uh, that with more data the more model gets better and better so that is not overfitting so what we will do so moving forward let's see kaggle user personality let's apply our model to whole kaggle user comments let's see what is the most common kaggle user personality so for that i will write here ps underscore join then comments was to this underscore join message dot apply Next, here I will write model underscore learning dot fit train. train type all equals to model it's loading here so moving forward what we, what we will do uh, let's create a bar graph to see kaggle user personality okay loading it will show the warning something like this so let me write the code for the bar graph okay it's a long code so i will write first then i will get back to you so i wrote the code so let me run it and see the personality so here you can see ESFP is the most used personality. So let's see the uh, count, personality count, percentage count. For that, I will write here underscore DF percent friction underscore DF. count and underscore df then again count okay. here I will write prediction underscore df description personality apply yeah x join
So here you can see the percentage count for every personality okay with description extroversion sensing feeling perceiving ESFP so finally at the end we will see the personality distribution using pie chart okay so here i will write labels equals to prediction underscore tf i will write description okay size is equals to prediction underscore df percent base equals to go dot i equals equals to tables comma values equals to sizes layout should be layout equals to go dot layout equals to Kaggle user externalities data equals to trace O dot that data was to data Y dot I plot. Okay, let me run it. Okay, let me run it. So here you can see the pie chart. So like most fifty percent is ESFP. Okay, then 23 is introversion institution, then so on. Okay, so everything is written here and in every color. So, apparently, the most common Kaggle user personality is ESFP, this 50.6%. Okay, so extroversion, sensing, feeling, perceiving. But we are getting this conclusion based on user's comment. It is reasonable to think that user who participate more writing comments are more extrovert our sample data don't come from the Kaggle users population it is only based on the comments it comes from the Kaggle users comments so our conclusion can't be applied to all Kaggle users so like more accuracy models could be obtained the more data on that note if you are an expiring AI ML engineer there is no better time to train yourself in the exciting field of machine learning if you are looking for a course that covers everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques like machine learning algorithm, 
development and unsupervised learning. Look no further than our Caltech in partnership with IBM. This AI ML bootcamp in collaboration with Caltech will help you advance your career as an AI ML specialist. The AI ML bootcamp includes live classes delivered by industry experts, hands-on lab, industry relevant projects, and master classes by Caltech professor. Key features of this amazing machine learning course include and up to 22 CUs from Caltech CITME, online convocation by Caltech CTME program director, Simply Learns Career Services helps you get noticed by top hiring companies, earn a bootcamp certificate from Caltech CTME, 25 plus hands-on projects across industry verticals to integrated lab. So why wait? Join now. Seats are filling fast and find the course link from the description box below. So in today's session, we will go through what is a speech recognition system. Moving forward, we will see how a speech recognition system works. After that, we will create a speech recognition system using Python. We will perform different function and create speech recognition system using different Python libraries. Before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss what is a speech recognition system first and proceed further for the same. What is a speech recognition system? A program capacity to convert spoken language into written language is known as a speech recognition system, also known as automatic speech recognition. Computer voice recognition or speech to text, despite being sometimes confused with voice recognition. Speech recognition focus on converting speech form a verbal to a text format, whereas voice recognition only aims to distinguish the voice of a certain person. Voice and speech recognition are two distinct technologies and they shouldn't be confused. To recognize word in spoken language, speech recognition is used. Voice recognition uses biometrical technologies to recognize a specific person by their voice. So after knowing what is speech recognition system, let's move forward and see how does speech recognition system work. Speech recognition in Python works with algorithm that perform linguistic and acoustic modeling. Acoustic modeling is used to recognize phonetics in our speech to get the most significant part of speech as words and sentences. Speech recognition starts by taking the sound energy produced by the person speaking and converting it into the electrical energy with the help of microphone. It then converts the electrical energy from analog to digital and finally to the text. It breaks the audio data down into sounds and it analyzes the sound using algorithm to find the most probable word that fits that audio. All of this is done using natural language processing NLP and neural networks. Hidden Markov models can be used to find temporal patterns in speech and improve accuracy. So here is one question for you guys. I will give you one minute for this. You can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section. So I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. I'm repeating again. So here is one question for you guys. I will give you exactly one minute for this. You can comment or you can give answer in the chat section. So I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. So the question is, which of the following is the correct extension for the Python file? I'm repeating again. Which of the following is the correct extension of the Python file? Option A dot Python, option B dot PL, option C dot PY and option D dot P. So let us know your answer in the comment section below. So I am starting a timer of one minute. Just type your answer in the comment section or in the chat section. Do let me know your answers please. I kindly ask that everyone take part in this to make this live session exciting. So I am starting the timer. You can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section so I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. So the question is which of the following is the correct extension of the python file. 37 seconds remaining. Option A dot python, option B dot pl, option C dot py, option D dot p. Let us know your answer in the comment section below. I kindly ask that everyone take part in this to make the live session exciting. You have 15 seconds remaining. Let 
एंड सेकेंड मो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग करेक्ट एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द पाइथन फाइल थ्री टू वन आफ्टर दैट अलॉटेड टाइम एज पास दो प्रोवाइडेड द करेक्ट और रिस्पॉन्स विल रिसीव अ रिस्पॉन्स एंड दोज हू प्रोवाइडेड द इनकरेक्ट रिस्पॉन्स विल रिसीव वन ओके सो नाउ लेट्स मूव टू अवर प्रोग्रामिंग पार्ट टू क्रिएट अ स्पीच रिकॉग्निशन सिस्टम यूजिंग पाइथन सो फर्स्ट वी विल ओपन अ कमांड फ्रॉम टू राइट अ कमांड टू ओपन जुपिटर नोटबुक सो हेयर वी विल राइट जुपिटर नोटबुक प्रेसेंटर so this is the landing page of jupyter notebook and here you can select new python file so this is how the jupyter notebook ui looks like so at first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us in creating speech recognition system so here we will write first let me remain rename this speech recog so first i will import import speech underscore recognition and second import pyttsx3 press enter so the incredibly extension i repeat the incredibly extensible speech recognition library serves as a wrapper for a number of well known speech apis the speech recognition library includes default api key for one of these the google web speech api hard coded that implies that you can start moving without needing to register for a service and python project would benefit greatly from using the speech recognition package due to its versatility and usability and then pyttsx3 a python text to speech conversion library is called pyttsx3 it is compatible with python 2 and python 3 and work offline unlike competing libraries to obtain a reference to a pyttsx3 engine instance an application calls the pyttsx3 in it it is very user friendly program that turns typed text to into speech so moving forward let's write code for actual speech recognition system so here i will write sr equals to speech underscore recognition dot recognizer r must be capital here yeah there i will write with speech underscore recognition dot microphone x source two then colon yeah here i will write print will write here okay silence please okay. then i will write here sr dot adjust underscore for underscore ambient underscore noise then source to comma duration equals to okay then enter then i will print something like speak now please something like that then i will write here audio audio 2 equals to sr dot listen source 2 and here i will write for text equals to sr dot recognize a okay. underscore google audio 
2 then here I have to print the small letters in lower case so I will write here text equals to text dot lower then here I will write print it you say plus text yeah everything look great so a recognizer is a machine ability to listen to spoken words and identify them you can then use a speech recognition in python to convert the spoken words into text make a query or a give a reply you can even program some devices to respond to these spoken words like every time the recognized speech from mic function is invoked the recognizer is calibrated for changing noise condition using the adjust for ambient noise this one for ambient noise the backlog parameter of the listen function allow a quiz size to be specified it will listen to what we are speaking or saying this recognize google a function on the recognizer class which you have now developed will be used to query the google web speech api and convert spoken words into text recognize google needs the argument audio data in order to function properly otherwise it will fail python built-in function lower is mostly used to handle strings the lower method converts each capital character in the provided string to lowercase before returning the lower caste string it accepts no arguments it returns to the original text if the supplied string has no capital letters now let's check whether it's working or not so i will run it yeah run all hello how are you doing yeah, you can see hello how are you doing printed so let me try another one subscribe to simply learn youtube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from simply learn So here you can see subscribe to simply learn youtube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from simply learn is printed so a speech to text is working fine so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any questions or any queries regarding any code or you have any questions just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you with the correct solution now moving forward what if you want that system will write what we are saying and speak that too this will be printed and now moving forward what if you want the system will write what we are saying and speak that too so for that we will write a small line of code so first we will do we will create one here like we will insert cell below we will write a function here so df speak now command colon then voice equals to p y t t s x 3 dot in it okay then voice dot say command then voice dot run and wait yeah so what we will do here we will write like speak now then so this voice is nothing just a variable to text to speech and in it pyttx3 engine has started obtains a pointer to an instance of an engine that will utilize the specified driver if another engine instance is already using the given driver the other engine instance is written if not a new engine is built speak now is a function in which 
using get function i am getting the values of the text this one i will get now let's run this sort of code and let's see if it is working or not so i will run hello how are you all speak now is not different okay speak now okay and is small okay my bad run this again hello how are you all hello how are you all I hope you can hear properly. So let me run this again for another demo example. Subscribe to Simply Learn YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any update from Simply Learn. Subscribe to Simple and YouTube channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Learn. Yeah, so I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any queries regarding any code or you have any question related to Python, just put as in comments. Our team will shortly provide you with the correct solution. Okay, okay, moving forward. So at last, let's create a speech recognition system from which we can open our websites and all like YouTube, like Facebook, like Simply Learn, anything. So we will op open new file for this. I will create the separate one here I will write speech to web websites okay speech to web so here I will import import speech underscore recognition then import pyttsx3 then one major library import web browser okay then i will run it yeah i hope you already know these two first two libraries so this is third library is used for Web browser is the file source code. The web browser modules offers a high level user interface that enables user to view web based content. In most cases, executing the open function from the, this module will result in the desired outcome. So moving forward, let me write code for it. So I will write code first, then I will explain you line wise. So I will write if underscore underscore name then again two underscore equals to equals to underscore main then again underscore then colon yeah then you have to give a path like for your browser you can use edge you can use google chrome anything firefox anything so here i will give path path equals to then c drive i have my path already program files and x86 Microsoft and edge then okay, then application then ms edge dot exe you have to write at the end this percentage s don't forget to write this okay so path is set so let me create sr equals to speech recognition dot recognizer same as previous one and i will write with speech underscore recognition 
डॉट माइक्रोफोन एज सोर्स एन एस आर डॉट एडजस्ट और बी एंड नॉइस देन सोर्स Now everything seems good. Let me write print. What we have wrote there, like speak. Now please. So here I will write. Please. Say something. To open. Okay. I'll write audio equals to sr dot listen listen that source and I will print like what you said so it will hear hearing and i will here i try and accept then try so here i will write destination equals to sr dot recognize underscore google then audio print here you asked to open right here plus destination okay so then web browser web browser dot get that path then open that destination destination okay so here i will write that accept exception exception as you can write e then print if there will be error error stia e okay so our recognizer is a machine ability to listen to spoken words and identify them you can use speech recognition in python to convert the spoken word into text you can even program some devices to respond to these spoken words every time the recognized speech from mic function is invoked the recognizer is calibrated for changing noise condition using the adjust ambient noise method a socket is already to receive connection after calling the listen function prior to performing the accept method on the server socket the listen method should be called the backlog parameter of the listen function allow a queue size to be specified it will listen to what we are speaking or saying the recognize google function on the recognizer class which you have now developed will be used to query the google web speech api and will convert spoken words into text recognize google needs the argument audio data in order to function properly otherwise it will fail okay so okay so let's try this it's working or not let me run this okay invalid syntax perhaps you forgot a comma Okay, let me see that print error ink it should be here yeah. okay let me check this
Let me run this again. Well, it's in text. Perhaps you forgot a comma. Try to run this again. Two. Let me remove this. I guess it will work fine. Still, did input. Okay, okay, no issues. So here I will write again. Accept exception. E. Int errors tr okay I forgot to write plus okay okay e yeah now it will work fine www.youtube.com here you can see youtube is open yeah so we will try this one more time www.facebook.com so here you can see facebook is open www.facebook.com one more last time www.simplyland.com You can check our amazing courses on different different technologies here on simplyland website simplyland.com So in today's session we will discuss what fake news is and at the end we will do a hands off lab demo of how to redact fake news using machine learning before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss first what fake news is and proceed further for the same. What is fake news? False or misleading information that is reported as news is called fake news. A common goal of fake news is to harm someone or something reputation or to profit through advertising. The term fake news was first used in 1890s, a time when dramatic newspaper reports were common. Even though incorrect information has always been disseminated throughout history. However, the phrase has no clear definition and is often used to refer to all misleading information. High profile individuals have also used it to refer to any news that is not favorable to them. So dear learners, if you want to upskill your AI and machine learning skill, so give yourself a chance to simply learn professional certificate program in AI and machine learning which comes with a completion certificate and in-depth knowledge of AI and machine learning. Check this course details from the description box below. Now let's move to our programming part. So first we will open a command prompt to write a command to open Jupyter Notebook. So here we will write Jupyter Notebook. Center. And here I have to select new Python kernel file. Okay, so this is how the kernel look likes. So first we will import some major libraries of Python. So here I will write import pandas as pd. And import numpy as np. 
then import seaborn as sns okay then import sklearn dot model selection Port train underscore test underscore split. Before that, I will import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Okay, then I will write here from sklearn dot matrix import accuracy or then from sklearn dot matrix import classification Report and port re then import string. Okay, then press enter. So it is saying okay, here I have to write from everything seems good. Loading, let's see. Okay, till then, NumPy is a Python library used for working with arrays. It also has function for working with domain of linear algebra and matrices. It is an open source project and you can use it freely. NumPy stands for numerical Python. Pandas. So, Panda is a software library written for Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis. In particular, it offers data structure and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series. Then, Seaborn. An open source Python library based on matplotlib is called Seaborn. It is utilized for data exploration and data visualization. With data frames and the pandas library, Seaborn functions with ease. Then, matplotlib. For Python and its numerical extension, NumPy, matplotlib is a cross platform for the data visualization and graphical charting package. As a result, it presents a strong open source suitable for MATLAB. The APIs for MATLAB allow programmers to incorporate graphs into GUI applications. Then this train test split. We may build our training data and the test data with the aid of SQL and train test split function. This is so because the original data set often serves as both the training data and the test data. Starting with a single data set, we divide it into two datasets to obtain the information needed to create a model like Hohn and test. Accuracy score. The accuracy score is used to gauge the model's effectiveness by calculating the ratio of total true positive to total true negative across all the model prediction. This RE, regular expression. The functions in the model allow you to determine whether a given text fits a given regular expression or not, which is known as RE. Okay, then a string. A collection of letters, words, or other characters is called a string. It is one of the basic data structure that serves as the foundation of manipulating data. The str class is a built-in string class in Python. Because Python strings are immutable, they cannot be modified after they have been formed. Okay, so now let's import the data set. We will be going to import two data set. One for the fake news and one for the true news or you can say not fake news okay so i will write here ef underscore fake equals to pd dot read underscore csv or what can i say df fake okay underscore fake okay then fake dot 
CSV. You can download this data set from the description box below. Then data dot true plus two pd dot read underscore CSV. Sorry, CSV. Then fake news. Sorry, true. True dot CSV. Okay. Then press enter. So these are the two data set. You can download these data set from the description box below. So let's see the board data set. Okay. Then I will write here data underscore fake dot head. So this is the fake data. Okay. Then data underscore true dot head and this is the true data okay this is not fake so if you want to see your top five rows of the particular data set you can use head and if you want to see the last five rows of the data set you can use tail instead of head okay so let me give some space for the better visual so now we will insert column class as a target feature. Okay. Then I will write here data plus go fake class equals to zero. Then data underscore true and class equals to one. Okay. Then I will write here data underscore fake dot shape and data underscore true dot shape okay then press enter so the shape method return the shape of an array the shape is a tuple of integers these number represent the length of the corresponding array dimension in other words a tuple containing the quantities of entries on each axis is an array shape dimension so what's the meaning of shape in the fake world in this data set we have two three four eight one rows and five columns and in this data set true we have two one four one seven rows and five column okay so these are the rows column rows column for the particular data set so now let's move and let's remove the last 10 rows for the manual testing okay then I will write here data underscore fake let's go manual testing was to data underscore fake dot tail for the last 10 rows I have to write here 10 okay so for I in range Two, three, four, eight, one, sorry, zero, comma, two, three, four, seven, zero, comma, minus one. Okay. And df underscore not df data underscore fake dot drop one yeah. instead of one I can write here I comma this is equals to zero in place equals to then data not here data underscore same I will write for I will copy from here and I will paste it here and I will make the particular changes 
So here I can write true. Here I can write true. Okay. Then I have to change a number. Two one. Four one six. Right, two one four zero six minus one. Same. So press enter. X is equal to zero. Let's since X, maybe you mean double zero or show off this okay we will put here double quotes and i'm putting this Take dot drop i x is to zero to in place. Okay, but also that equals to another equals to yeah. So okay, axis is not defined. So now it's working. So let me see now theta underscore pick dot shape okay and data dot true and data underscore true dot shape as you can see 10 rows are deleted from each data set So I will write here data underscore fake underscore manual testing class equals to zero and data underscore true underscore manual underscore testing Class equals to one. Okay. Just ignore this warning. Then let's see data underscore fake underscore manual testing dot head. As you can see, we have this, and then data dot sorry underscore true underscore manual testing dot at ten. Okay. This is this is the uh, true data set. So here I will merge data underscore merge equals to td dot concat concat is used for the concatenation data underscore fake data underscore boom comma axis equals to zero then data underscore merge dot head the top 10 rows yeah as you can see the data is merged here okay 
first it will come for the fake news and then with the for the true news then let's merge true and fake data frames okay we did this and let's merge the column then data dot merge dot columns or oh, let's see the columns it is not defined but I data underscore much these are the uh, columns same title tag subject date class okay now let's remove those columns which are not required for the further process so here i will write data underscore or equals to data underscore merge crop title we don't need then subject we don't need then so one so let's check some null values it's giving me errors yeah of this that's good then data dot is null dot sum center so no null values okay then let's do the random shuffling of the data frames okay for that we have to write here data equals to data dot sample one then data okay data dot at now you can see here the random shuffling is done and one for the true data set and zero for the fake news one okay then let me write here data dot reset underscore index place equals to true data dot drop comma axis equals to one then comma in place equals to true okay then let me see the columns now data dot columns so here we have two columns only rest we have deleted okay so you see data dot add yeah everything seems good let's proceed further and let's create a function to process the text okay for that I will write here but okay. you can use any name text and text equals to text dot lower okay and text equals to re dot for the substring remove these things uh, from the data okay so for 
that I'm writing here. Mama. Okay. Then text equals to re dot substring. Comma, comma, text. Okay. Then I have to write text equals to re dot substring. www dot s plus comma comma text okay then text equals to re dot substring then Comma okay. then text equals to re dot substring then percentage as again percentage for rg dot sk function it has string dot punctuation okay. comma then comma then text right then text equals to re dot substring and n comma text equals to re dot substring right here Again, D, and again, okay. then comma, and again, text here. Okay, then at the end, I have to write here return text. So everything like uh, this, uh, these type of special character will be removed from the data set. Okay, let's run this. Let's see. Yeah, so here I will add df, sorry, not df, data, data, then text, was to data, okay. dot apply to the function in what, what, what opt, okay press enter yeah so now let's uh, define the dependent and independent variables okay x equals to data text and y equals to data class okay then splitting training and testing data okay sorry so here I will write x underscore train comma x underscore test 
uh, then y underscore train comma y underscore test equals to train underscore test underscore split then x comma y comma test underscore size equals to 0 0.25 okay press enter so now let's convert text to vectors for that i have to write here that z is x so here i will write from sklearn dot feature extraction dot text import t vectorizer okay then vectorization equals to t f i d vectorizer okay then sv underscore train equals to vectorization or is that a tio and vectorization dot fit then transform x underscore train okay then xv underscore test equals to vectorization vision dot transform x underscore test okay then press enter uh, so now let's see our first model logistic regression so here i will write from sklearn dot linear underscore model okay import logistic regression then lr equals to logistic regression and after right here lr dot fit then xv dot not dot x dot train comma v underscore test okay press enter here i have to write y train okay then press enter it will work so here i will write prediction underscore linear regression so l r dot predict v underscore test okay let's see the accuracy score for that i have to write l r dot score then x v underscore test comma y underscore test okay let's see the accuracy so here as you can see accuracy is quite good 98 percent okay. now let's print the classification vision port y underscore test comma prediction of linear regression okay 
so this is you can see precision score then f1 score then support value accuracy okay so now we will de uh, do this same for the decision tree gradient boosting classifier random forest classifier okay then we will do model testing then we will predict this code okay so now for the decision tree classification so for that i have to import from sklearn dot tree import decision tree classifier okay then at the short form i will write here I will copy it from here then okay then i have to write the same as this so i will copy it from here and change linear regression to season tree classifier okay then i will write here same so dt question dt dot predict sv underscore test E still loading it's it will take time okay till then let me write here for the accuracy et dot score three underscore test comma y Let's wait. Okay. Let's run the accuracy. So as you can see, accuracy is good than this linear regression. Okay. Logistic regression. Okay. So let me show you the let me predict print. So this is the accuracy score. This is the all the report. Yeah. So now let's move for the uh, gradient boosting classifier. Okay, for that I've write from sklearn dot ensemble port. Gradient boosting classifier. Classifier. I will write here GB equals to let me copy it from here. Will give here random score state equals to zero. Wait, 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 wait. So I will write here GB dot fit XV underscore train comma Y underscore train. Okay, then press enter. So here I will write predict underscore gb equals to gb dot fit sorry predict three dot test or dot underscore test okay. till then it's loading so i will write here uh, for the score then i will write gb dot score 
थ्री अंडर स्कोर टेस्ट कॉमा वाई अंडर स्कोर टेस्ट ओके सो लेट्स वेट इट इज रनिंग दिस पार्ट टिल देन लेट मी राइट फॉर दी प्रिंटिंग दिस It's taking time. Taking time, still taking time. Forty-five will run this. It's not coming because of this. Yeah, it's done now. So you can see the accuracy is uh, not good than decision tree, but yeah, it is also good. Ninety-nine. Point four something, okay. So now let's check for the last one, random forest. First, I will do for the random forest. We have to write from Escalon dot assemble import random forest. Classifier. Okay. Then here I will write RF equals to right. I will copy it from here. Then random state equals to then rf dot fit three underscore train comma y underscore train okay then press enter and predict underscore rc or f was to rf dot predict three underscore test okay till then i will write here it's still loading it will take time so till then i will write for the score score accuracy score xv underscore test comma y underscore test okay then I will write here till then print classification port and y underscore test comma it will take time little bit um, so uh, it run the accuracy score is 99 it is also good so now i will write the code for the model testing so i will get back to you by after writing the code so so i have made two functions one for the output label and one for the manual testing okay so it will predict the all the from the all models from the repeat so it will predict the it the news is fake or not from all the models okay so for that let me write here news was to string input okay then i will write here manual underscore testing okay. so here i will you can add any news from the you can copy it from the internet or whatever from wherever you want so i am just copying from the internet okay from the google the news which is not fake 
ओके आई एम एडिंग विच इज़ नॉट फेक बिकॉज आई ऑलरेडी नो आई सर्च ऑन गूगल सो आई एम एंटरिंग दिस सो जस्ट रन इट लेट सी वट इज शोइंग ओके स्ट्रिंग इनपुट ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट कॉलेबल ओके लेट मी चेक दिस फर्स्ट Okay, I have to give here str only. Yeah, let's check. Okay, I have to add here again the script. Yeah, manual testing is not defined. Let me see manual testing. Okay, I have to edit something. It is just GB, and it is just RF. Still, GBC is not defined. Okay, okay. So, what I have to do? I have to remove this. This. Okay. Everything seems sorted now. as i said to you i just copy this news from the internet i already know the news is not fake so it is showing not a fake news okay so now what i will do i will copy one fake news from the internet and let's see it is detecting it or not okay so let me run this and let me add the news for this so all the models are predicting right it is a fake news or you can add your own script like this is the fake news okay i hope you guys understand till here so i hope you guys must have understand how to detect a fake news using machine learning you can you can copy it any news from the internet and you can check it is fake or not on that note if you are an aspiring ai ml engineer there is no better time to train yourself in the exciting field of machine learning if you are looking for a course that covers everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques like machine learning algorithm development and unsupervised learning look no further than our caltech in partnership with ibm this ai ml bootcamp in collaboration with caltech will help you advance your career as an ai ml specialist The AI ML Bootcamp includes live classes delivered by industry experts, hands-on lab, industry-relevant projects, and master classes by Caltech professor. Key features of this amazing machine learning course include and up to 22 CUs from Caltech CITME, online convocation by Caltech CITME program director, Simply Learn's career services helps you get noticed by top hiring companies, earn a bootcamp certificate from Caltech CITME, 25 plus hands-on projects across industry verticals to integrated lab. So why wait? Join now. Seats are filling fast, and the, find the course link from the description box below. So in today's session, we will go through what hate speech is. After that, a hands-off lab demo of how to detect hate speech using machine learning. We will perform different function and different Python libraries. Before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss hate speech and proceed further for the same. So what is hate speech? Any speech that disparaged a group of people because of their race religion nationality national origin sexual orientation or gender identity is considered as hate speech hate speech is frequently used to promote bigotry and hatred additionally it can be applied to threaten and intimidate others people may experience loneliness anxiety and fear as a result hate crimes may also result from it additionally hate speech can harm between various racial and ethnic groups it is crucial to identify hate speech using since doing so can assist in stopping these negative impacts dear learners if you want to upskill your ai and machine learning skills so give yourself a chance to simply learn professional certificate program in ai and machine learning which comes with the completion certificate and in depth knowledge of ai and machine learning check this course detail from the description box below So here is one question for you guys. I will give you exactly one minute for this. You can comment 
or you can give your answer in the chat section so i can see the answers given by you are right or wrong i'm repeating again here is one question for you i will give you exactly one minute for this you can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section so i i can see if your answer given by you are right or wrong so the question is all keywords in python are capitalized lower case upper case and none let us know your answer in the comment section below so i am starting the timer of 1 minute okay the time start now to let me know your answers please just type your answer in the comment section or in the chat section all python keywords are in capitalized lower case upper case none Let us know your answer in the comment section below. Thirty seconds remaining. All keywords in Python are capitalized, lower case, upper case, or none. Thirty seconds more. All keywords in Python are capitalized, lower case, upper case, and none. Let us know your answer in the comment section below, please. Five seconds more. After the allotted time has passed, those who provided the correct response will receive a response, and those who provided the incorrect response will receive one. So now let's move to our programming part. First, we will open command prompt to write a command to open Jupyter notebook. So here we will write Jupyter notebook. Enter. So this is the landing page of Jupyter Notebook, and here you have to go new Python. This is the how the Jupyter kernel look likes. So here, first we will import some major libraries of Python, which will help in analyzing the data. So here I will write import pandas as pd. Import numpy as np. Then from sklearn section or text Counter vectorizer. Okay. Then one more from skill learn model selection for oh. test underscore split. Then from sklearn or tree import Then I okay counter vectorizer count vectorizer it is so numpy is a Python library used for working with arrays. It also has a function for working with the domain of linear algebra and matrices. It is an open source project and you can use it freely. Numpy stands for numerical Python. And pandas pandas is a software library written for the Python programming language for data manipulation and analysis. In particular, it offers data structure and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series. This count vectorizer, a fantastic utility offered by the Python scikit-learn module is count vectorizer. 
it is used to convert a given text into a vector base on the number of times like count that each word appears across the full text train test split so our data is separated into train and testing data using the train test split technique we must first separate our data into features x and label y divided into x train x text y train and y test the data frame is the model is trained and fitted using x train and y train set okay then decision tree a supervised machine learning algorithm called decision tree uses a set of principles to make judgments much like how people do okay Move forward let's import some more libraries so here i will write import re then import uh, nltk then from nltk dot okay. I will write here stammer equals to nltk dot mobile stammer English from NLTK purpose upwards. Okay, then we'll write import string and I will assign stop word was to set upwards and English NLTK okay the function in the module allow you to determine whether a given text fills a given regular expression which is known as a regular expression or RE or if a regular expression matches a particular string which comes down to the same thing NLTK the NLTK toolkit was created for Python users to deal with NLP it offers us numerous test data as data set and different text processing libraries using NLTK, a range of activities can be carried out, including tokenizing and visualizing parse trees. Snowball Stammer The stemming algorithm also refers to as Porter 2 stemming algorithm. It is an improved version of Porter Stammer because some of its shortcomings have been addressed. Okay, so stop word. A stop word is frequently used term that a search engine has been considered both while indexing items for searching and when retrieving them as a result of search query then import a string it is used to determine whether or not substring is part of the main string it gives back a pointer to the first instance of s2 in s1 i hope you guys understand till here okay if you have any queries any question regarding this please comment down below so after importing libraries Let's import our data set. So I will write here df equals to pd dot data set name Twitter so data. Okay. So print. So this is the Twitter data set. You can download it from the description box below. And if you want to see the last five rows instead of top five rows, you can use tail instead of head. Okay.
moving forward i will add a new column to this data set as labels which will contain the values as hate speech detected offensive language detected or no hate no offensive language detected okay for that i have to write here df equals to df app detected here okay. which detect third one is column so here i will add df dot at you can see we have added labels okay offensive language moving forward now i will only select the tweet and the label column for the rest of the task obtaining a hate speech detection model okay so here i will add df equals to df i have to write tweet i guess yeah you can see here tweet comma labels right here df dot head As you can see it okay so moving now i will create a function to clean the text in the tweet column like this that at the rate and this exclamation this type of words so here i will add df clean Right text equals to str text equals to three dot substring dash this dot r question mark then and i will write here text equals to re dot substring https s plus then W plus pick comma comma text. Okay, here I will write text is to re dot subs. Uh, 
dot star plus Next here, then okay, let me. So here I will add text equals to re dot substring. Thing dot punctuation Here again text equals to read dot substring then slash n for the next line comma No D W R text equals to and stop word x equals to And I will write df, then column in tweet, put df. We have to add print so everything will be clean like this let me run it okay so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code so please comment down below so everything is sorted now everything is clean okay so moving forward now let's split the data set into training and test set and train a machine learning model for the task of head speech okay so here i will write x equals to mp dot array then df p dot array then df count 
Fraser. Here I will write x equals to cv dot fit to transform x. Okay. Here I will write x underscore train underscore test train underscore test comma y comma test size equals to time state will be equals to bc I will write classifier dot fit Okay, let me run it. Okay, D F the season tree classifier. Sorry, my bad. The input contains an M. Okay, there is one empty. It's working so moving forward now let's test this machine learning model to see if it is detecting hate speech or not okay so here i will write test underscore yeah okay so i will give one sentence here like uh, i And df equals to transform test underscore data to array. Then here I will add print classifier. as you can see hate speech is detected because i will kill you there is something hate on that so let me write another sentence here like you let me run it so here you can see no hate and offensive speech you are awesome so try with another one like you okay press enter so here you can see it is not hate speech but offensive language okay i hope you guys must have understand how you can detect hate speech using machine learning if you have any queries you can ask in the comment section below our team will respond as soon as possible so in today's session we will discuss what image classification is and moving ahead we will discuss what cnn is and at the end we will do a hands-off lab demo of image classification using cnn 
So before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss what image classification is and proceed further for the same. What is image classification? The process of classifying an entire image is known as image classification. Images are anticipated to have just one class per image. Models for image classification taken an image as input and produce a prediction of the class to which the image belongs. So we can utilize image classification models when we are not interested in individual instance of items with position information or their shape. So let's see what is CNN. Machine learning includes convolutional neural networks, also known as convents or CNNs. It is a subset of the several artificial neural network models that are employed for diverse purpose and datasets. A CNN is a particular type of network design for deep learning algorithm that is utilized for tasks like image recognition and pixel data processing and so more. Okay. Although there are different kinds of neural network in deep learning. CNNs are preferred neural architect for identifying and recognizing object. Therefore, they are really suited for computer vision activities and applications where accurate object recognition is crucial, such as facial and self-driving automobile system. So moving ahead. So dear learners, if you want to upskill your AI and machine learning skills, so give yourself a chance to simply run professional certificate program in AI and machine learning which comes with the completion certificate and in-depth knowledge of AI and machine learning. Check this course out details from the description box below. So now let's move to our programming part of how to do image classification using CNN. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. So first we, we will open a command prompt to write a command to open Jupyter Notebook. So here we will write Jupyter notebook press enter so this is the landing page of jupyter notebook so here you can select new python file so this is how the kernels look like okay jupyter notebook kernels look like so first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us in like analyzing the data okay so in this file we will classify small images of cifar 10 dataset from tensorflow keras dataset there are total 10 classes as shown below so we will use cnn for the classification purpose okay so here i will write import tensorflow as tf okay so from tensorflow dot keras import datasets from our layers models. Okay. So we will import numpy as np. Right. And import matplotlib as plt right okay so here i will write pyplot as plt right so tensorflow this one this so tensorflow is a free and open source machine learning and artificial intelligence software library it can be used for variety of applications but it focuses on mainly deep neural network training and the inference purpose. Okay, got it. And this NumPy. NumPy is a Python library used for working with arrays. It also has a function for working with the domain of linear algebra and matrices. It is an open source project and you can use it freely. NumPy stands for numerical Python. And this third one, Matplotlib. For Python and its numerical extension, NumPy. Matplotlib is a cross-platform data visualization and graphical charting package. As a result, it presents a strong open source substitute for MATLAB. The APIs, application programming interfaces for Matplotlib allow programmers to incorporate graphs into GUI applications. Got it? So let's run this. Let's 
let me change image classification using pnn okay so let's load the data set okay we will load the data set from the uh, load data function so here i will write x underscore train comma y underscore train okay and one for test x underscore test comma y underscore test okay then equals to data set data sets dot we are using cipher 10 cipher 10 for 10 dot load dot underscore data okay so it will load our data so let's load the data so data is loaded let's see x score test dot shape okay yeah so as you can see so we have thousand rows and one more x underscore train dot shape so let me run this so here you can see like we see like training data like training images are 50,000 and the test images are 10,000 okay so this is for testing this is for training and so moving ahead we will see for the y train dot shape and here we will see the array so y underscore train five okay let's send this so first let me give some space yeah so here y underscore train is a 2d array like for our classification having 1d array is a good name you know so what we will do we will convert this to now 1d array this is 2d array we will convert into 1d array okay for that we will write here y underscore train equals to y underscore train dot reshape minus 1 Okay. then y underscore train and again semicolon 5 let's run this okay so now this is 1d array so y underscore test equals to y underscore test dot reshape in minus one here I will write classes equals to there are some classes okay in the data set like airplane comma automobile comma bird comma cat here dog dog horse ship 
truck. Okay. So these are the some classes like airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer. So it will be help in classifying the images. So let's plot some images to see like what they are, what they exactly are. Okay. So we will, what we will do, we will create one function for that. Let me write here def plot underscore sample. Okay. Then x comma y comma index. Okay. Then I will write here plot dot figure plt dot figure then figure size should be comma 2 equals to plt dot show like image show to I am show x index plt dot x label classes y index okay so let's see some samples of the images so i will write a plot underscore sample uh, underscore train comma y underscore train okay comma let's see the fifth image okay then enter should be capital so as you can see this is a car so it is showing automobile okay so let's see once more like plot underscore sample x underscore train comma y underscore test comma we'll see the tenth one okay it is not quite visible so we'll go for the eleven okay. okay okay I am why it is showing wrong because I use here test so I have to use here train instead of test then it will show I think correct yeah you can see horse then horse then what about 201 image see you can see so we will see once more 500 you can see frog okay it's not quite visible So you can see here the proper shape okay so what we will do now we will normalize the images to a number from 0 to 1 image has three channels like rgb colors so and each value in the channel can range from 0 to 255 hence to normalize in 0 to 1 range we need to divide it by 255 okay so now what we will do we will normalize the data so here what we will do at x underscore train equals to x underscore train divided by 255 and 0 okay and same for test equals to x underscore test divided by 255 Point zero, okay to range between 0 to 1 yeah we will build simple artificial neural network for image classification first okay so we will write here ann was to models dot sequential okay then I will write here layers dot platen 
put underscore shape equals to 32 comma 32 comma 3 okay then again layers dot dense 3000 comma activation was to RELU got it then again for the thousand so I will what I will do I will copy it and paste it here okay so here, thousand so uh, let me add one more one more layer dot dense then we'll add 10 comma activation also softmax okay here i will okay let me give for the better visuals yeah so nn and then dot compile optimizer okay equals to sgd and comma i will write here loss equals to sparse categorical cross entropy okay so here i will write comma then matrix equals to accuracy and ann dot fit underscore train comma y underscore train comma epochs okay so number i will give epochs equals to five right so it will take time to run it's running here there is some issue underscore train epochs equals to five what it is saying in user code the file program C engine okay So I'll copy it and paste it again. Run it again. Okay, now it's working. Okay. So it will take time and then I will get back to you. Okay. Then import numpy. You guys already know what numpy is. NP y underscore prediction was to ann dot predict x underscore test okay then y underscore prediction underscore classes was to np dot argument max element or element in y underscore prediction print classification port
comma classification let's go report then y underscore test comma y underscore prediction underscore classes okay so let me run this capital yeah it will take less time now we will create a graph okay like x text is like we have thousand images so graph will be like messed up still let's see so i like yeah, import seaborn as sns okay okay seaborn yeah let me give some space here i will write plt dot bigger because I should be fourteen comma seven. Okay, then as in as we will create a heat map for this. Then y underscore prediction not equals to true. Then plt dot y label this truth okay. plt dot x label fiction then plt dot title should be vision okay then plt dot show let me run this okay see y prediction has x text it's still running let's wait So now let's make CNN model okay to train our images so for that I will write CNN equals to models dot sequential okay I'll write here copy paste here yeah so let me run this so this is our CNN model uh, from which we will train our images and CNN like compile then optimize optimizer equals to Adam okay okay comma right here then loss equals to sparse categorical okay, then cross entropy okay and comma I will write here matrix equals to accuracy run this okay loss yeah 
Same goes for you. Okay, loss. Will I do? We'll rewrite this. Okay, now let's check CNN model for the 10 epochs. Okay. Let's see the accuracy is increasing or not. CNN top. Let's go train. Comma y underscore train. Comma box. Let's see. It is started. It will take less time than the previous one. Okay. See. If you want this whole code, you can comment down the same. Okay. So after completing this, I will get back to you. So it is almost done, like 27 seconds for the 10 epochs. Till then, let me write CNN dot evaluate. X underscore test comma Y underscore test. Okay. So with CNN, the N5 epoch accuracy was around like 70% and which is a significant improvement over ANN. Okay, ANN we have like just 49. Okay, and CNNs are the best for image classification and gives the superb accuracy. Also, computation is the much less compared to simple ANN as max pooling reduces the image dimension while still uh, preserving these uh, features. Okay, so let me run this. Take some time. Till then, I will write y underscore prediction equals to CNN dot predict and x underscore test. Okay. Then I will write a y underscore prediction then colon 5 let me run this so you can see the accuracy and all the array okay so, yeah so let's classes equals to np dot arg max element or element in y prediction okay. then y underscore classes then These are the number of classes then y underscore test is column 5 these are the array so it's converted into array then now let's see the it is predicting right image or wrong image okay by not with the training data here we predict from the training data y training x train okay now we will predict from the test data so here i will write plot 
underscore sample then x underscore test comma y underscore test and you can write the random one so here I will write 60 let's see so you can easily see here this is horse and it is predicting right horse and let me okay plot underscore sample then x underscore test comma y underscore test comma 100 okay press enter okay x is capital yeah so you can see this is dear okay so our model is predicting the correct image okay then what we like let's see it is predicting the right class or not okay we made the classes like random classes okay where are these these so let's see it is predicting right or wrong okay for that i have to write classes y underscore classes it's like which number 60 okay 60 the 60 is not defined because like number of classes okay okay so there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay 0 to 9 i can choose so here what i will do i will take the small one i get 5 okay this is frog okay I'll frog right so i will take instead of 60 here i will see frog okay y class is not defined y underscore classes is defined see okay there are three s yeah so as you can see frog this is frog so our class is defining right so here i will write it again like 60 it was horse and let me write here 60 you can see the right prediction okay so this is what how you can you do image classification using cnn i hope you guys must have understood this concept like how to do image classification using cnn on that note, if you are an aspiring AI ML engineer, there is no better time to train yourself in the exciting field of machine learning. If you are looking for a course that covers everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques like machine learning algorithm, development and unsupervised learning, look no further than our Caltech in partnership with IBM. This AI ML bootcamp in collaboration with Caltech will help you advance your career as an AI ML specialist. The AI ML bootcamp includes live classes delivered by industry experts, hands-on lab, industry relevant projects and master classes by Caltech professor. Key features of this amazing machine learning course include and up to 22 CUs from Caltech CITME, online convocation by Caltech CTME program director, Simply Learns Career Services helps you get noticed by top hiring companies, earn a bootcamp certificate from Caltech CTME, 25 plus hands-on projects across industry verticals to integrated lab. So why wait? Join now. Seats are filling fast and find the course link from the description box below. In today's session, we will go through what is movie recommendation system. After that, we will see how movie recommendation system work. Moving forward, we will see filtering strategies for movie recommendation system and at the end, we will see hands-on lab demo like how to create movie recommendation system using Python in detail. We already have data set with us. We will perform different function and implement a movie recommendation system using Python. Before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss what is movie recommendation system actually is and proceed further for the same. So, renting CDs and DVDs, reading local TV listenings, watching film strip projectors or recordings, all of this is a thing of the past today. All of the world's biggest film collections have been digitized and move to the online streaming services like Netflix, HBO or YouTube. These platforms can now help us with 
what is possibly the most difficult task of all choosing a movie they have been enhanced with ai powered capabilities well that is no longer a concern for you it is finally time for machine learning to put its skills on display in the modern cinematic landscape to create advanced predictive system for true movie expert data scientists are prepared to investigate our behavioral patterns and those of movies a movie recommendation system also known as a movie recommender system uses machine learning to predict or filter user fill preferences based on their prior decision and actions it is an advanced filtration system that anticipate the consumer in question potential like selection for a domain specific item a movie so after seeing what is movie recommendation system let's move forward and see how movie recommendation system actually works a movie recommendation system fundamental idea is a pretty straight forward every recommender system primarily consists of two components users and items user receive more prediction from the system and the actual movies are the products filtering and predicting only the movies that a matching user is most likely to wish to see in the main objective of movie recommendation system the user information from the system database is used by the ml algorithm for these recommendation system based on information from the past this data is used to forecast the user in questions behavior in the future data should be handled by expert because it is so crucial to ml projects including the movie recommendation system after seeing how movie recommendation system works let's see some filtration strategies for movie recommendation system to assist user in finding the most relevant films movie recommendation system employ a variety of filtration techniques and algorithm the content based filtering and the collaborative filtering system subcategories of the ml algorithm used for the movie recommendations are the most well liked ones filtering based on content or content based filtering a method of filtering movies in a movie recommendation system that makes advantage of the items data this information which is taken from the just one user is quite important in this case this technique uses an ml algorithm to suggest movies that are comparable to the user's past choices therefore the information about the prior movie choices and likes just one person is used to generate similarity in content based filtering and the second one is collaborative filtering as the name implies this filtering technique is based on the interaction between the relevant person and the other user for the best outcomes the system contrasts and compares these behaviors it combines the film choices and users patterns of several people like there are two types of collaborative filtering algorithm the first one is collaborative filtering based on users the goal is to find patterns in target users and other database users like movie preferences and the second one is collaborative item based filtering the fundamental idea behind this is to find comparable products products like movies that target users rate or interact with so after seeing the filtering strategies for movie recommendation system so here is one question for you guys i will give you one minute for this you can comment or you can give answer in chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong i'm repeating again so here is one question for you guys i will give you one minute exactly one minute for this you can comment or you can give your answer in chat section so i can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong so the question is which is the best language for machine learning programming which is the best language for machine learning the first one is java the second one is python the third one is r language and the fourth one is c++ so this is the question i am repeating again which is the best language for machine learning the option one is java second python r language and c++ so i am starting timer of 1 minute just type your answers in comment section or in a chat section do let me know your answers please i want that everyone should participate in this and make this live session interesting so i am starting timer so oh, your time starts now please guys do let me know your answers in chat section 
or in you can comment down Forty two seconds to go. You can comment or you can give your answer in the chat section. So I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. Thirty seconds more. Which is the best language for machine learning? You can give your answer in chat section or you can comment. So I can see if the answers given by you are right or wrong. Guys, come on, please! I want that everyone should participate in this and make this live section interesting. Come on, guys! Five second more. One. Yep. Time up. So time is over. We will give reply those who gave correct answer and those who didn't give correct answer. We will give you a reply with the correct answer. So now let's move to our programming part. to perform movie recommendation system using python so first we will open command prompt to write command to open jupyter notebook so we will write jupyter notebook press enter so This is the landing page of Jupyter Notebook and select here new new python file So this is how Jupyter Notebook UI look like so at first we will import some major libraries of python which will help us in mathematical functioning so So the first one is numpy import numpy as np so numpy is a python library used for working with arrays it also has a function for working in the domain of linear algebra and matrices it is an open source project and you can use it freely numpy stand for numerical python so here np np is denoting numpy so we will import the next library import pandas as pd is should be space yup so pandas is a software library written for the python programming language for data manipulation and analysis in particular it offers data structures and operation for manipulating numerical tables and time series so so after importing libraries we will move ahead and import data set So for importing data set we have to write like we have two data set with us let me show you the data set we have two data set with us the first one is credits this one and the second one is movies one one movies one so don't worry you can get these data set link in the description box so let me write here credits let's go data frame equals to pd dot read underscore csv here you have to give your location of the data set credits dot csv the second one is movies let's go data frame this is for movie data frame pd dot read csv so here you have to give the movie location movie data set location movies dot csv okay everything seems good let me run this yeah so then wait here pd is for the pandas library 
read is used for reading the data set from the machine and csv is used for the type of file which you want to read so after this let's write code to see the data set so we will write here credits underscore df and we will run it so this is our so this is our credit data set and next one is movies underscore so this is our movie data set so this is how our board data set look like so here you can see three dots this one and here also this one so we are unable to see our full data set like what if we want like full a 4803 rows so at that case we can write here pd dot set underscore option okay and here we will write display dot max underscore columns this and here we will write none same for the rows pd dot set option display dot max underscore rows none. Okay. none let's run this so now if we will write credits underscore df it is running yeah so now you can see your full data set like full credit data set with 4803 rows or 4802 rows because there is this is starting from zero that's why so what about movies data set okay wait running it is still running you can see here So here you can see the um, full data set movie data set with 4802 rows or if you want to see only five top rows so you can write here credits underscore df dot hat so by this only five top rows so from head you we can see our five top rows and if we will use tail instead of head we can see our last five rows so here let me do with the movies one df dot tail yeah so here you can see 4798 row 4799 till 4802 so with tail we can see our last five rows so moving forward let's merge the credit data set to movie data set because if we will combine them the confusion will be less and at the end it will be better for us so we will write here movies underscore equals to movies underscore data frame and credits underscore df on it tell okay t is small i guess yeah perfect title so let me do something something like this okay it is saying data frame object is not callable edits underscore df movies okay why because we haven't wrote merge here now it will work yeah perfect it's working so data is merged 
let's see the number of rows and column using share function so now we have only one so movies underscore df dot shape okay let's run it 4809 and 23 23 but if we see here like in movies data set so in movies data set here here yeah yeah there are 20 and in here we are four columns in credit data set so like so you will be thinking that's why not 24 why only 23 columns that is why on title you can see here on title the titles in both titles are same you can see here both titles are same in both okay let me show you like this okay avatar pirates of the caribbean spectre and so on here you can see avatar pirates of the caribbean spectre and so on so that is why on title written while merging so title are same so moving forward let's see our merged data set so we will write only movies underscore data frame dot head yeah so our data is merged you can see the last cast crew movie id yeah you can see here movie id title are the same they are merged cast crew okay guys let me give some more for the better view yeah so you can see all columns of credit data set are added to movies one so moving forward let's see another function like movies underscore df dot info so by this yes you can see so by this the data frame information is printed via the info method the data includes the total number of columns their labels data kinds memory use range index and the number of cells in each columns like non null values note that info method does indeed print the information so here you can see the all the information is printed okay like columns name and the all null values count and data types too like this int object int in which we are working most so after this let's move forward and select some main column in which we are working most so we will write movies underscore df equals to movies underscore df title comma and another one is overview Okay, why? Okay, here we have to get like this. Yeah. So here we have to write genre. Genre is complete, and we will work on what keywords? Keywords are the main keywords. Okay, keywords. Then to cast. Then we will we will do recommendation with the crew as well. Okay. So by running this, let me see our data again with seven. Okay, okay. There is one error. Okay, this is movie. The movie's idea of genre, no? Yeah, not in index. Okay, got it. Got it. Why not genre? It's genres, I guess. What it is? It's genres. That's why it's genres okay yeah so let's see our data again with seven columns so i will write so i will write here movies underscore df dot head here so you can see only our we have like movies id same title overview genres keywords cast and crew only so here you, you can see the selected columns okay 
So let's move forward and once again let's see the info again like movies underscore df dot info has come with selected columns and let's move forward and see how many missing values are present in particular column so like the columns is full we can see here but we don't know about that 4803 values are filled or not so what we will do it we will see how many missing values are present there so here we will write like movies underscore df dot is null dot sum not like this yeah perfect so the function data frame is null this one is null dot sum dot sum returns the number of missing values in the data set so here you can see overview have three missing values so what we can do is we can write here wow mm, movies underscore df df dot drop na this equals to true okay we will run it but sayings okay but it's document drop in a was it true okay fine dot underscore drop in a and yeah, it will not create an issue. So if you set in place equals to true, the drop any method will modify your data frame directly. That means that if you set in place equals to true, the drop any will drop all missing values from your original data set. Let's move forward and see movies underscore df dot duplicated. So the duplicate method returns a series with true or false values that describe which rows in the data frame are duplicated or not. Use the subset parameter to specify if any column should not be considered when looking for duplicates. So here let me run this first. So here we are, we are getting zero. Why zero? So if you are like thinking there is no true or false return. So if you write it without sum like if I will write it without sum okay let me copy from here yeah and I will run this so here you can see false 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 in whole data set so sum will combine them and return you a value at the end zero represent false itself so we need to not need this so we will write something else so moving forward let me write first movies underscore df dot i location zero dot joiners let me run this so the i log function this one i log function first let me do something like this it will go up okay huh okay so from i log function in python is defined in the pandas module that helps us to select a specific row or column from the data set using the iloc method in python we can easily retrieve any particular value from a row or column by using index value so here zeroth position line is coming which is here you can see so name action like name action name adventure name fantasy this sci fiction this one science fiction yeah so this is because I am giving here genre that is why you can see here see id28 name action name something 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 like that okay so let's import something called ast abstract syntax tree so this is one of the major library import ast let me run this 
import is a class defined is the ast module that is used to express the import statement in python in the form of abstract syntax tree so so an abstract syntax tree or just syntax tree is a tree representation of the of the abstract syntactic structure of text written in a formal language each node of the tree denotes a construct occurring in the text so let's convert some like literal to object and append them so here i will write def convert obj object like l equals to blank array for i in ast dot well bit b b j object okay like l dot append return here we are converting is like here is a convert is a function and l is a array to append by using for loop we can append them to name so let me write code then i will explain like what is happening so let me write full code so movies underscore df like donors okay equals to movies donors and then dot apply what so then movies underscore df then i will write keywords as to movies underscore df keywords apply underscore df dot so if we will see our old data set in that like we will see old data set in that genre and that's keyword this keyword apps id name and so on like id that name like this type of things so it will create a mess in retrieving them so by using ast library we just convert them to the normal one like title so got it guys so i hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code or question just put as in comment our team will shortly provide you the correct solution i repeating again i hope you guys understand till here if you have any type of questions regarding any code or something so just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you the correct solution so moving forward let's convert cars to and like same as previous way like like this only so what we will do here we will write def convert pm here i am using so l equals to counter equals to 0 st dot literal if counter does not equals to 3 then l dot 
Apple dot dot append. Okay, then here I have to write I to name. Okay. Counter. Equals to one. If you want to write like counter is equal to counter plus one, it is like both the same. Else, take turn L. So let me run this. Let me run this. Okay, so after this small code, we have to assign the values like we are doing it for cast now. So movies. Okay, movies. Let's go DF then cast. Let's do movies. Underscore DF. Cast. Dot. Lie. Convert everything seems good. So let's see the changes are visible or not. So we will write here movies underscore df dot head. You can ignore this like this is nothing. So here you can see cast is also same like keyword and journal. So like let's do for the crew too. So like we are converting you can say in a structured way. So let's do for the crew one two. So let me put some yeah. So here we will add dev uh, like fetch which is nothing like a function name fetch director obj okay colon l equals to or i n a s t dot literal obj if i job so it equals to like we can hit director so then l dot append l dot append mm. l dot append to the same name but Return K capital L So we have to again write that movies video equals to movies in crew Lie. H. Just remember, fetch director is a function name. Let's see changes. So here I have to write movies, then present. So yeah, crew is all set. So changes are visible and data is looking good. So what we like, if I want to see the first movie, Avatar overview, this. Like this dot 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 dot. So I have to write here like movies overview overview at zeroth place. So yeah. So this is a full overview of Avatar movie. Like let me read for this in this uh, 22nd century, a uh, paraplegic marine is dispatched and blah 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 and civilization. 
So moving forward that what we want to recommend movie in the basis of overview, genre, keyword, cast. So for that we need a separate separate words like in the then 22nd century along. So if you will see in other columns all the words are separated but like here if you will see all the words are separated like action is separated, adventure is separated, fantasy is separated. So there is a long sentence in this this one in the overview one this is a long sentence so it's difficult to recommend from this so what we are going to do is well we will separate them like like other columns so here we will write movies overview plus two movies then overview and dot apply apply my bad sorry then lambda colon x dot split yeah order so let's see the results so movies Yeah, you can see in the set word. So now you can see all the words are separated by comma. So now it will easy to match overview to recommend a particular movie. So moving forward. So what we are going to do is if there is a two word and space between there. So we are going to remove that space. So here you can see science fiction are separate separate. Okay. So we are going to re like remove this one, this space. So let's write code for that. So here I will write like um, overview is already done. So we will do not do for that. So let's write code for the rest columns. So here I have to write movies like genres. So movies and again genres apply lambda x i dot replace this to no space oh uh, it seems good then I have to write for everywhere. So for i in x. It's for i in x. For i in x. Movies genres equals to movie genres dot apply lambda x. I dot replace this to this for. Seems good. So let's copy paste this. See one for keywords and one for cast and crew cast cast that you test is same so let me run this okay no error seems good so let's see the changes so movies yeah so now you can see the science fiction space is gone like here is science fiction space is there now science fiction space is gone. Yep. So like, uh, okay, let's move forward and create one new column name as tag and put all the column data in a particular column. Okay, let me do first. Yeah, let me write movies.
Excuse the column over column name. Equals to movies. Then first we will put overview. Plus movies. And genres. And movies. Then what we have to give uh, keywords. Keywords. Then again, movies. Then past. We run this. Okay. So let's see the data frame. Uh, movies. Okay, still coming. So, like there is one problem, I guess. Yeah, no, no, no. So here you can see all the data is merged in a under tag column. Yes, you can see like in the second century, blah blah blah. So, I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any code. Or anything, just put as in comment, or our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. Okay, so I'm repeating again. I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any code, or like any question, just put as in comment. Our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. So from here, let's create a new data frame. Okay. So let me create new data frame because now we don't. Need this overview cast crew joiner like columns like this. We have already merged into a one one column like tag column. So we will write here new df equals to movies. Okay. So like movies, we need movie id. New data frame. We need movie id comma. We need title. And we have everything in tag column, tax column. So we need tax column. Okay, let's run this. Let's see our new data frame. Yeah. So this is how our new data look like with only three columns, like uh, movie ID, title, and tax. So here you can see array brackets like this. This array brackets. So we are gonna uh, remove them. So we will do what we will write here. We will write new data frame that in tax equals to new data frame tax dot apply lambda x. Then I will give space dot join seems good everything is okay okay fine yeah so let's see the results so we will write here new underscore data frame so you can see the brackets are removed. Now let's see the data which is present in the zeroth index in tag column like this dot 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 in the same. Okay, for that we have to write here uh, a new data frame tags. We did it before like for the overview. So here we have to write, yeah. So this is the whole data in the first like first index zeroth index. So some part of the overview like from civilization and some are you can see this action adventure fantasy science fiction these are some like genres and uh, like here you can see like these are some crews members and yeah like sam worthington like there are some cast crew okay so like moving forward like what we are going to do is just make them in lowercase for the better prediction like 
something in capital and something in like small now. So let's make it to lowercase. So new underscore df tax equals to new underscore df tax dot apply da colon x dot lower okay so don't worry about this error let's see the result uh, new underscore df dot Yeah, now all the data present at tag column is in small case or you can say lower case. Moving forward, let's do some feature extraction using count vectorizer. So let, let me write first from sklearn dot feature extraction feature extraction. Okay, cool. Dot text import count vectorizer cv equals to count riser underscore features features equals to like 5000 top words equals to English and this yeah so count vectorizer okay there is a I cannot import count vectorizer from sklearn from user Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, my bad here. V is capital. Okay, guys, so he V is capital. Yeah, so no error. So, count vectorizer is a great tool provided by the scikit-learn library in Python. It is used to transform a given text into a vector on the basis of the frequency count of each word that occurs in the entire text. So, let me write something cv dot. with underscore transform f x like dot to array shape okay so the fit method like learns a vocabulary dictionary of all tokens in the raw documents that is it creates a dictionary of tokens by default the tokens are words separated by spaces and like punctuation so that maps e single token to a position in the output matrix so here cv is a like here cv is a counter vectorizer so let's convert into vector to array so for this we have to write vectors vectors equals to cv dot fit okay then transform x sin so here we have to write dot to array Then we have to write vector its vectors. Yeah, you can see vector to array all the zeros. Okay, so moving forward, let's get the feature name by writing. Okay, so we will write here. Learn. 
HGV dot get feature feature names feature names okay then bracket yeah so okay we have like 500 feature names so I'm repeating I'm saying again like I hope you guys understand till here if you have any question or any query regarding any code whatever it is so just put as in comments our team will shortly provide you the correct solution okay guys like any code or you are not understand anything just put as in comment our team will shortly provide you the correct solution so let's import some major library which is import NLTK so what is NLTK? The natural language toolkit NLTK is a platform used for building Python programs that work with human language for applying in statical natural language processing NLP. It contains text processing libraries for tokenization, parsing, classification, stemming, tagging and semantic reasoning. So moving forward like from let me write first from N NLTK dot stem dot porter import porter yes equals to porter Stemming is a process for reducing a word to its word stem that suffix and prefix or to the roots of words known as a lemma. Stemming is important in natural language understanding NLU and natural language processing NLP. So here like I have to write so here I will write def stem to text y equals to or i in text dot split y dot append dot stem done dot join y so let's apply stemming to a tag column so here we will write a new df tags equals to new df tag dot apply so let's import uh, cosine similarity from sklearn so here we will write from sklearn dot matrices dot pairwise import cosine underscore similarity okay it seems good from SQL and matrices matrix sorry matrix dot pairwise it is pairwise pairwise import cosine similarity okay let's run this no error so cosine similarity measures the similarity between two factor I repeat cosine similarity measures the similarity between two vectors of an inner product space it is measured by the cosine of the angle between two vectors and determines whether two vectors are pointing in roughly the same direction. It is often used to measure document similarity in text analysis. So here we will write cosine underscore similarity vectors.
so these all are the vector present let's see the cosine similarity vector column and row using space so here i will write cosine similarity vectors dot shape so it's still running you can see here yeah so 4806 rows and 4806 columns are there let's assign variable similarity to this okay so let's similarity we'll write like this that is also cosine similarity underscore here why did this because we don't have to write always this long sentence a long keyword you can say so moving forward let's see first column like we will write similarity yeah so this is our first column uh, so let's see the rows only so we will write here clarity 0 dot shape okay, 4806 okay so let's move forward and let's create some like sorted list so for that sorted list enumerate spelling is fine uh, okay one more like similarity similarity zero here I have to write reverse equals to true comma key equals to lambda colon x not capital X x have to write one one colon six seems good yeah so the enumerate function in python converts a data collection object into an enumerate object enumerate returns an object that contains a counter as a key for each value with an object making item within a collection easier to access so finally let's create the recommend function to check the movie recommendation system okay so so let's write here def recommend we so new df in the df title equals to equals to movie x zero then says so similarity and movie okay so movies list equals to sorted Numerate RT enumerate distances reverse 
वस्तु रो की वर्ड सॉरी की ओनली की इक्वल्स टू लैमडा स्कॉलन एक्स वन कॉलन सिक्स और आई इन मूवीज लिस्ट f dot i lock i zero zero dot title we because we need title only so uh, yeah it seems good okay so finally that like time is came. so finally the time is come to check the recommendation of your favorite movies so you can comment the in the chat section so i can check so let me write first recommend recommend for movie avatar okay so here you can see the recommendation system is working fine so titan a dot e small soldier independence day are the recommendation for the movie avatar so let me check for the another one recommend like for one of my favorite movie iron man so here you can see iron man 2 iron man 3 avengers age of ultron captain america and the avengers are the recommendations for the movie iron man so let me check for the one more recommend liars Liar. Things going on thirty, and the last one is last one I want to check is Captain America Civil War. Let me copy from here only. Yeah, you can see the Captain America, the first Avenger, the Winter Soldier, Iron Man three, Age of Ultron, the Avengers. So I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any questions or any query regarding any code or question, just put as in comments. Our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. On that note, if you are an aspiring AI ML engineer, there is no better time to train yourself in the exciting field of machine learning. If you are looking for a course that covers everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques like machine learning algorithm development and unsupervised learning, look no further than our Caltech in partnership with IBM. This AI ML bootcamp in collaboration with Caltech. will help you advance your career as an ai ml specialist the ai ml bootcamp includes live classes delivered by industry experts hands on lab industry relevant projects and master classes by caltech professor key features of this amazing machine learning course include an up to 22 cus from caltech ctma online convocation by caltech ctma program director simply learns career services helps you get noticed by top hiring companies earn a bootcamp certificate from caltech ctma 25 plus hands on projects across industry verticals to integrated lab so why wait join now seats are filling fast and the find the course link from the description box below in today's session we will go through what is text to speech converter after that we will create text to speech converter application using python this we will create this one we will perform different functions and create amazing ui for application using different python libraries Before we move on to the programming part, let's discuss what is text to speech converter and proceed further for the same. Text to speech is an API cloud service that enables you to turn written text into real sounding audio in a range of languages and voices. By connecting with people in their own language, you can give your business a voice and enhance customer experience and engagement. Increasingly accessibility of users of diverse abilities offering audio alternatives to prevent driving while distracted or automating customer service interaction to reduce hold items now let's move to our programming part to create a text to speech converter application using python so first we will open command prompt 
to write command to open Jupyter Notebook. So here we will write Jupyter Notebook to open Jupyter Notebook. Press enter. Yeah. So this is the landing page of Jupyter Notebook and select open new Python file. So this is how the Jupyter UI looks like. So at first we will import some major libraries of Python which will help us in creating UI and to convert text to speech. So the first one is import sorry import ek enter as tk. So tk enter is also known as tk interface. The default Python interface for TCL tk GUI toolkit is the tk enter package or tkr interface. Majority of Unix system including Mac OS as well as Windows machines support tk and tk enter. tk enter which is part of all common Python distribution is the binding legal method for creating graphical user interface GUI in Python. It is the only framework included in the Python standard library in fact. So the next one is first we will write here import sorry from tk enter import so from tk enter port file dialog so file dialog tk enter provides a number of built in methods and class library function to create application components and user actionable elements one of the tk enter modules called file dialog offers classes and library functions for making windows for selecting files and dictionaries when you need to request that a user browse a file or directory on the system, you can use file dialog. So, the next one is from tk enter dot ttk import combo box. Combo box combines an entry field and a list box. One of the TK enter widgets, it has down arrow to choose from a menu of possibilities. It aids consumer in choosing from the list of available options. A pop up of a scrolling list box, it displays down the entry field when user clicks on the drop down arrow on the entry field. Only when option from the list box is selected, will the select option be shown in the entry field. This one is it is one of the major one import e y t t x s x 3 ok so a python text to speech conversion library is called p y t t s x 3 it is compatible with python 2 and 3 and works offline unlike competing libraries to obtain a reference to a p y t t x library Engine instance an application called the PYTTX3 in it. Factory method. It is a very user friendly program that turns type text to speech. The SAPI 5 for Windows program offers two voices that the PYTTSX3 module supports a female voice and a male voice. Three TTS engines are supported by it Windows SAPI i5, NS Speech for Mac OS, eSpeak is available on all other platforms. So, the next one is import OS. So, the OS module in Python has function for adding and deleting folders, retrieving their contents, changing the directory, locating the current directory and more. Before you can communicate with the underlying operating system, you must import the OS module. The next one is from G 
gtts import gtts from play sound import play sound so gtts python has a variety of apis that can turn text into speech the google text to speech api often known as gtts api is one of these apis gtts is a simple to use program that turns enter text into audio that can be saved as mp3 file languages including english hindi tamil french german spanish and many more are supported via gtts api any one of the two accessible audio speeds rapid or slow may be used to deliver the speech the voice of created audio however cannot be changed as the most recent version so let me run this so after importing major libraries let's move forward and start creating user interface so i will write here import sorry root equals to tk root dot title simply learn to speech converter root dot geometry i will give here 1000 580 plus 200 from y axis and and 80 from top okay root dot resizable will make it to like false false and again false okay then root dot configure background should be bg equals to we'll use here hash F seven AC four zero and okay. First, I will explain this. So here TK stand for TK Inter Library. Every word in the string returned by the title. Method begins with an uppercase letter like a title or a header. The following letter will be changed to uppercase if the word contains a number or a symbol. one of the built in methods in tk inter is geometry which is used to specify dimension while tk inter widget windows are mostly used to set the application windows dimension length the tk inter root window size can be changed in accordance with the needs of the user using the resizable this one or we can forbid resizing of the tk inter window in other words this is approach can be used to generate a window with a defined size simple text changes can be made to labels using python tk inter config function two widgets are shown in the example below a label and a button when the button is pressed a function that is attached to the button execute the label config method you can give background color as per your choice i've gave this orange something so let's run this and see the first look of ui by writing here i will write here root dot main loop i will run run all okay so this is how our ui looks like first ui so i can't resize because i gave here false false i can't resize it so if i will write here set of false i will write here true and 
again through here so then i will run again so now i can resize it as per my choice okay yeah so i will write here false and again false it okay let's move forward and add some logos in the application i have already some png images on my system you guys can use any picture of your choice i have some images here images so you guys can use any picture of your choice so i will write here like simply underscore logo first two photo image file then path of file c users slash slp Zero nine three seven five top then ETS folder ETS folder then simply dot PNG okay, then I will set label put H was to simply image simply logo sorry and background I can copy from here dot place was to 880 and y axis should be like I will give here uh, 530. Okay, so let's run this root dot main loop. Okay, there is something error such file directory okay there is fun now let me run this yeah now you can see simply learn is there i need little bit down so let me write again give here 39 run it again okay now it's looking good yeah the image object is returned by the photo image function output it's that easy to display a picture in python However, the photo image class only supports the GIF and PNG images, which is a concern. JPEG and GPG and PNG are the formats that are most often used. The container box where the text or images can be placed is specified by the label. The widget is used to inform the user or other widgets that are utilized in the Python application. The text or a portion of the text shown in the label can be configured using a number of different parameters. The root window is where all the widgets are placed. This one, the root window is this. All the widgets are placed. Even TK inter application must include precisely one increase of the class TK, which is an instance of app, is a subclass of frame, and app is an in instance of app.
by positioning them in a precise location with the parent widget the port manager organize widgets the option used by the geometry manager are anchor border mode height width real width x and y anchor shows the location where the widget is anchored right okay let's move forward and add logo here instead of this add one logo here so i will make it comment down on it yeah so for that i will write logo underscore image first to photo image then file first to will copy the path from here chat here okay so let me change it to speech dot png perfect so root dot icon photo false from a logo underscore image put dot main let me run this yeah now you can see a logo here so the image object is written by the photo image function output it is the easy to display a picture in python however the photo image class only support the gif and pgm which is a concern jpeg gpg and png are the formats that are most often used the title bar icon of the tk enter top level window is set using the icon photo but in order to set any image as a title bar icon it must be an object of the photo image class so okay logo is added this logo is added now we will make one upper frame like this one upper frame till here something like here and we will add the heading and logo in the frame okay so let me do this let me make it come as a comment okay so i will write here upper frame first to frame and root and background should be you can use any color so i will write here hashtag 14 a Seven D D. Cool. Then width should be fifteen hundred. Yes, I can give it twelve hundred is enough. And height should be one thirty is fine. So upper m dot place. equals to zero and y equals to zero x and y equals to zero y because we need at the top so I will add one picture there so picture equals to again photo image okay, I can copy from the same image i will add then label then when i'm where i'm adding here is like upper frame comma image equals to here and background should be the same and dot place was to 150 and y should be like i will give you a 
okay so let me run this root dot main loop we'll run this run all there I have to write y equals to 20 and again okay, here what they should f is capital hope now it will run properly so the image is added here yeah for the purpose of grouping and arranging other widgets in a user friendly manner the frame widget is a crucial it functions like a container that organizes the positioning of other widgets to arrange the layout and provide these widgets the screen uses rectangular regions the root window is where all the widgets are placed even tk enter application must include precisely one instance of the class tk and the label is specifies the container box where the text images can be placed. These widgets used to inform the user or the other widgets that are utilized in the Python application. The text or a portion of the text shown in the label can be configured using several different parameters. Okay, so logo is added and it's looking great. So I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any sort of code, so just put as in comment, our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. I'm repeating again. I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any questions or any query regarding any code, or if there are any questions related to Python, just put as in comments, our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. Moving forward, let's add a heading to the application. So I will make it as a comment. First, I will add some else below better view okay so for that i will write here label i have to head adding at the upper frame so i will write here upper frame should be will give x each converter font should be times new woman okay, size should be 40 is enough I guess and it should be bold comma bg background color should be i will add this one only so copy paste it here and foreground should be white and dot place at x equals to 250 and why should be the same i guess i should be i will write 35 to 30. so let's run this root dot main loop okay run this Okay, it's like option front. Okay, this is font. I font. Sorry, my bad. How it will work? I guess. Yeah. So here you can see text is added. So for the purpose of grouping and arranging other widgets in user friendly manner, the frame widget is crucial. It functions like a container that organizes positioning of the other widgets. And the label specifies the container box where the text or images can be placed. This widget is used to inform the user 
of other widgets that are utilized in the Python application. And in tkinter, there are three different ways to specify a widget type. To put it simply, use a string format tk, direct font format times 20 italic or bold. Font family size, styles is the structure of the string, where style can be any legal mashup of text style keywords. Okay, so heading is added. Now let's move forward and make our text box for writing text to it. So let me make first as a comment. Okay. So we are creating text box. So I will write here text box equals to text then root window. So I will write here root font. So let me tell you first, I will create a text box like this or this. So font equals to Calibri 20 and background should be black or white. Okay, let's do black first. Let it take it white only. White. Then relief is something. Relief equals to groove. And uh, wrap keywords into word or characters word. Word. And border width should be zero. Okay. So text box dot place. Where should I place it? X equals to thirty. Comma y equals to one fifty. Comma width. It should be. I will make it the longer one, so I will write here 940. Then height should be 180. So let's run this first root dot main loop. Let me run it. So yeah, text box is created. Hello guys. Yeah. So text box is created. So the Python application uses the text widgets to display text data. The single line text box is implemented using the entry widgets, which tkinter offers. The multi-line style text is with a variety of styles and characteristics is shown using the text widget. Instead of group, you can use raised, flat, rich, and many more. It is used to make contact fit within a text document with. Using the wrap features in tkinter, we may enclose the characters or words in the tk widgets. You can use word, cares, or none are the available default values for the wrap properties. The tkinter button BD option determines the width or stroke of the border that encircles the button. The width of the border around a button can be changed using the BD. So, by positioning them in a precise location with the parameter, the put manager organized widgets. The option used by this geometry manager are anchor, border mode, height, width, x and y, and many more. So, our text box is created. You can write anything. Now, let's move forward and add some combo box for selecting voice and speed. So first, I will, but I will do it. I will make it comment here. I will write gender box for male female. So equals to combo box put. Value 
Je faisais quoi sur Email. And font should be should be your font should be R O B O C E then twelve shall should be twelve. Then there is something called a state so R and then width 12 and gender box or place so i will place something here something here like gender should be here and speed should be here so i will write here equals to 40 comma y equals to 400 and gender box or set to male Let's run it so root dot main loop let me run this yeah so you can see male female there this is combo box so a combo box combines an entry field and a list box one of the tinker widgets it has down arrow to choose from a menu of possibilities it aids consumers in choosing from the list of available options a pop up of a scrolling list box it displays down the entry field when the user clicks on the drop down arrow on the entry field only when an option from the list box is selected with the selected option be shown in the entry field if i will select it then it will show female now male so some variables supported by tk enter can be used to change the values of tk enter widgets these variable operates as a typical variable would the values of these variable are set and retrieved using the set and get methods Combo box combines a list box widget and an entry widget. You can choose one value from a group of values using a combo box widget. You can also input a custom value in addition. So, set text is used to set the text in the entry box in the Python TK enter. It serves the purpose of entering text into the entry box when used as a function. We will write a function and use as a button to invoke it. So, okay, so it's look great. Moving forward, let's add one more combo box for the speed one, like fast, medium, and slow. So, what I will do, I will copy first, I will make it as a comment. So, first, I will copy this and I will paste it here. Then, I will write speed box again box in box then I will set it to medium and that there will be three values like fast medium medium and Low. and I will place combo box where should I place we'll place it something like here I will place it here so for that I have to give X as around 540 and Y should be same so let me run this and let's see so yeah so it's looking fine 
function I used here is same as the previous one that we did for the gender one, for this one. So I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any code, any sort of code, so just put as in comments, our team will shortly provide you the current solution. I'm repeating again. I hope you guys understand till here. If you have any question or any query regarding any code, just put as in comments, our team will shortly provide you the correct solution. So moving forward, let's add play button to playing the return text. But before that, let's add something called select voice and select speed label for these two combo works for like select, select voice type and select speed. So let's add them quickly. So I will write here label. I am adding it to the root window. So I will write here root and text equals to select voice type and font should be times Roman and size should be like 15 is enough I guess uh, it should be bold from a background color should be I will here copy paste yeah foreground color should be white or place equals to 40 and y equals to 370 okay let me copy this for the speed copy it and i will paste it here I will write here speed. Okay, everything same. Cut it and I will paste it here for the running. So let me run this. Select speed is there. I don't know where you select. Okay. Okay. I gave the same X values, I guess. Yeah. So here I have to write. 540. Let me run this again. Yeah. Select voice, male, female, select speed, fast, medium, slow. So the Python application uses the text widget to display the text data. The single line text box is implemented using the entry widget, which TKinter offers. The foreground color of a button is set using the TKinter button FG parameter. Alternatively, the text color is on the button. So it is looking cool. Now moving forward, let's add play button somewhere here. So I will write code for it. Play button. So I have one photo for it. Photo. Me copy the path it here and red light play. Then play Let's go BTN first to button. Text equal to text should be play. And there is something called compound. To left image was to a button. Comma background should be 
white and width is 130 font plus to Arial hold um, border width should be two point one C C means centimeter and there is something called command equals to speak now. Let's go. Etn dot place x should be four thirty five. Y should be four fifty. Let me see root dot main loop. Come make it comment. Okay. 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 So this is a function. We haven't created function yet. So I will add it at the last. So till see. This one border width. Okay, okay, W I D T H. I hope now it will work. Okay, TK enter. Sorry, my bad. So a Python application can add buttons by using the button widget. These buttons can show text or images that explain what they are for. When a button is clicked, you can connect a function or method that is called automatically using that command. So here compound determines the best way to display text and an image or the label cursor. Define how the mouse will look when it is over the widget. So the TK enter button BD option control the border width or stroke surrounding the button. And some TK enter widgets let you use command binding to link a callback function to an event. It entails that you may specify a function name in the widgets command option so that it will be called whenever an event occurs on the widget. Okay, so our UI for the text to speech converter application is created and it is looking fabulous. So now let's add function for converting the text to speech sound. Let me write the code first and then I will explain you line wise. Okay. Now we can write here command equals to speak now. Okay. So what I will do, I will add a function here. I will add function here. So let me write the code first, then I will explain you line wise lies. So here I will write TTS. TTS is nothing, just text to speech variable. PYTTSX3 dot init EF for function speak now. Next equals to text underscore box dot get 1.0 till the end gender equals to gender box okay, dot get and speed was to speed the score box dot get 
voices equals to cts dot get property voices okay so there is one another function set voice if gender equals to equals to male ets dot set property it should be capital property yeah voice the voice id voices id should be zero dot id ets dot say whatever written on the text ts dot run run and I'm done for then else ETS dot set property voice voices one dot ID ETS dot say text and again tts dot run and so by here i will for I will write code for that speed if text and again if speed equals to equals to fast and ETS dot set property and rate rate should be 250 at two voice if or else if speed also equals to yeah so then ETS dot set property and rate should be 150 that voice function will be called else ETS dot set property ETS dot set property and rate should be rate should be sixty at voice. Okay, so function is created dot get dot get get property find text. Okay. Now let me run this. So let me explain you. TTS is nothing, just a variable to text to speech, and in it, PYTTSX3 engine has started. Obtains a pointer to an instance of an engine that will utilize the specified driver. If another engine instance is already using the given driver, the other engine instance is returned. If not, a new engine is built. So speak now is a function which, using get function, I am getting the values of the text box voice 
I will show you it. So from this, from this speak now, I'm getting the value of text, male and female, then speed. And using the get property, I am getting the voices of male and female. In set voice, what I did using ID 0 for male and assigning into the male. And using ID 1 for female and assigning it to the female. And in this LCF ladder, I am setting speed to a particular values using the rate function and assigning them speed in frames per second. So now let's see text to speech converter is working or not. So what I will write here, hello, coders, welcome to simply learn. So I will say, hello coders, welcome to simply learn. Hope you hear the sound. I repeat, hope you heard the sound. Then same thing I will from from female okay object run and wait okay there is an error run and wait i will write Let me run this again. Hello, simply learn. Hello, simply learn. And again with female voice. Hello, simply learn. I will write here. Hello, simply. Learners, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, simple learners. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then I will play it to fast. Hello, simple learners. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then I will play it slow. Hello, simple learners. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And with that, we have come to end of this video on AI ML projects full course. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. Please ask any question about the topics covered in this video. In the comment section below our experts will assist you in addressing your problem thank you for watching stay safe and keep learning staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career we've got you covered Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.